Why relations between China and Russia have grown closer since the Kremlin's bloody invasion of Ukraine, senior U.S. Treasury officials say they have not seen any indications that China has consistently provided material support to the Kremlin as it seeks to sidestep Western sanctions and bolster its military. According to a senior Treasury official, China is now hesitant to help Russia materially on a large scale and in a substantial way, citing Russian efforts to get materials from Iran and North Korea instead. Over a month ago, U.S. intelligence revealed that Beijing had been willing to give Russia the sought military and financial aid. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan had already informed Yang Jiechi, a prominent Chinese official, about American worries regarding such a move. Senior officials attributed China's choice to delay providing more systemic assistance thus far to efforts throughout the sanctions coalition from public U.S. statements to active and direct direct communications that the Europeans have provided to China with ties between Washington and Beijing at record lows. The Biden administration has kept up its efforts to close the gaps in the Western allies sanctions regime as it expands intelligence sharing with U.S. allies and nations where Russia has sought to circumvent export controls and sanctions as the brutal Russian invasion of Ukraine enters its second year. The U.S. and its allies sanctioned a Chinese satellite business giving intelligence to the Russian Russian military in January. Certain Chinese companies were added to the U.S. export control list. Top U.S. Treasury and intelligence officials will share information with relevant partners as part of that effort and as leaders of the global financial system arrive in Washington, D.C. next week for the spring meetings of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. It will help nations and businesses understand how the Kremlin continues to use its intelligence services to try and evade the unprecedented sanctions regime established by the U.S. and its allies. The Treasury will make a more significant effort over the coming month to press countries the U.S. is concerned about, and senior officials will continue to disperse around the globe to strategize with U.S. allies and partners partners to intensify cooperation and increase pressure on nations crucial to Russia's efforts to evade sanctions and backfill its efforts. Brian Nelson and Liz Rosenberg, two of Treasury's senior sanctions officials, will continue the U.S. government's increased efforts abroad to advise particular nations and their companies about the dangers of supporting Russia and to provide comprehensive information on sanctions evasion. Rosenberg will travel to Kazakhstan and Central Asia, a country with a long history of ties to Russia and where officials have expressed concerns that Russia is sourcing materials. Nelson will visit Switzerland, Italy, Austria, and Germany to compare notes with their counterparts and continue sharing intelligence on how Russia is attempting to evade sanctions. Despite the effects that sanctions have had on the Russian economy, some observers have expressed concerns about Moscow's capacity to evade sanctions and reroute trade routes to continue obtaining some of the technologies and capital required to fund its war machine through nations its borders and more lenient regimes, like the United Arab Emirates and Turkey. In recent months, officials have seen some effects from their combined public and private initiatives. According to a person with knowledge of the conversation, Turkish officials informed the U.S. last month that their government has been taking additional steps to obstruct the transportation of commodities subject to sanctions straight to Russia. Since Russia began its brutal conflict with Ukraine, the U.S. has imposed thousands of sanctions against Russian officials, oligarchs, and businesses. It has also cut off the Russian central bank's access to its dollar-denominated reserves and the international financial messaging system, undermined Russia's defense industrial base, and set a price cap on Russian oil and petroleum products. With the Russian Finance Ministry reporting a $29 billion budget deficit for the first quarter of 2023 on Friday, one of the most effective initiatives, the price cap, has already been impacted. U.S. Deputy Treasury Secretary Wally Adimo publicly warned Russian intelligence agencies that the U.S. is keeping an eye on their operations and is taking strict action in a speech earlier this year on the anniversary of Russia's invasion. We are aware that Russia is aggressively looking for methods to get around these restrictions. Adimo added in his address in February, in fact, one of the ways we know our sanctions are working is that Russia has tasked its intelligence services, the FSB and GRU, to discover methods to go past them.